Hello and welcome everyone to the Gold and Silver Club end of week review. Today is the non-farm payroll special webinar presented by myself, Phil Carr and Nick Kelsey at the Gold and Silver Club. We will be reviewing the latest developments in the commodities markets. We'll be analysing the week's performance. So the live session will cover an end of week summary for commodities. We'll be looking at gold, silver, oil, natural gas and coffee, as well as some of the agricultural commodities. We'll be looking at the uh, top trades of the week. We'll cover live market commentary and technical analysis. We'll look at the week ahead, so the six key events looking forward. And, of course, we'll be answering any questions you may have on today's webinar as well. It is a non-farm payroll special, so we've got lots of prep uh, to do prior to non-farm payroll today. So the markets are looking very interesting. Uh, this week, again, has been an interesting week for gold, a week really of consolidation. I think that's going to change Today, after the non-farm payroll, gold's at some interesting levels um, from this consolidation, and we'll take a look at the points we're looking for a breakout. On the fundamental side, gold price has uh, moved slightly higher ahead of the highly anticipated U.S. jobs report. Gold prices were trading mostly higher today ahead of the highly anticipated U.S. jobs report, following bullish remarks from the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi on Thursday. The ECB announced fresh monetary policy stimulus, as well as lowering the ECB refinancing rate by 10 basis points. Worries about stagnant European economy influenced the central bank's decision, which in return boosted gold prices on safe haven demand. So today, traders will shift their attention, certainly today's non-farm payroll report for May. Earlier in the week, the US Department of Labor reported the number of individuals filing for initial jobless benefits in the week ending May the 31st increased 8,000 to 312,000 from the previous week's total of 304,000. The data could provide an early indication for today's non-farm payrolls data, which analysts are expecting could miss expectations. So May's non-farm payroll forecast is expected to show 215,000 jobs were added to US payrolls last month, down from 288,000 a month earlier. So the employment rate is forecast to edge up to 6.4% from 6.3% in April, and a higher than expected reading is viewed as bullish for the US dollar, of course, and bearish for precious metals, whilst a lower than expected reading is viewed as bearish for the US dollar and bullish for the precious metals. So either way, the report is likely to create a highly volatile opportunity for traders presenting very lucrative trading opportunities across the financial markets today. So that will be in two and a half hours time will have non-farm payroll. So we're very excited about that. Before we go into technical analysis, I'm Phil Carr, professional trader, trainer and speaker. I am the co-founder and director of the Gold and Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading the most lucrative financial markets in the world. So gold, silver, oil, natural gas, agricultural commodities. I've trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders and successfully manage their own investment portfolio, responsible for the research and development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategy that have a proven track record of generating for returns for traders. Also a regular contributor to a number of financial publications, speak at numerous trading seminars, webinars and workshops. Uh, joining me in running the Gold and Silver Club is Nick Cowty, professional trader, investment analyst and speaker. Nick began his career within private wealth management in 2002 before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Gold and Silver Club, spent over five years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks. And through his first hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders, discovered the formula mindset tools that can give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy. Also regularly writes for a number of global business and financial publications. We've appeared frequently on financial television. So that's some background uh, on the Gold and Silver Club, guys, for those of you who are new to uh, today's webinar. And uh, we'll take a look at the price of gold right now. So we're currently trading at $1,253 an ounce. So we're at some very interesting levels. I'll take a look at that on the chart very shortly. We've had a nice consolidation this week, and we're just really anticipating a breakout on non-farm payroll. Before we take a look at gold, uh, the top trades this week – We've seen uh, using the Gold and Silver Club signature trading strategies that we've traded have been the following. Now, first of all, we had a beautiful trade on platinum over the last week, entering into that 28th of May. We've really just had a, a fantastic pullback. We've now, we came down, hit our take profit uh, level just uh, yesterday, actually, 
and uh, the risk on that trade was 90 points. So for each lot traded, $900 profit, uh, $900 risk for each lot traded, and we came out at our profit target for 410 points, so $4,100 in just over a week on Platinum for a four to one. So Platinum's had a beautiful pullback and it's actually just bounced off that level of support. We'll take a look at that very shortly as well. Other top trades we've had this week have been Brent. Uh, Brent actually broke through uh, trend line and support level, some key support levels this week, giving us a really solid trade for a sell short. The risk on that was 60 points, so 600 um, US dollars for each lot traded for a profit of 120 points, so $1,200 profit for each lot, giving us a nice two to one this week on Brent. Um, we've also had a beautiful move this week on corn, just a very simple um, break of a key support level back down to the next very key support level. So the risk on that very nice 40 point risk. So each lot traded, we risked 400 US dollars for a profit of 120 points. So each lot traded $1,200 profit for a nice three to one. We come down and hit our profit target just yesterday, actually. Corn continues to sell off. We'll take a look at that very shortly. Okay, fantastic. Right, so we'll go over to the, the live uh, markets. A couple of questions coming through there. We can certainly have a look at that. It's just uh, let me, what I'll do, I'm going to switch my screens over. We'll go in with a bird's eye view of the markets. Then we can uh, zoom into the precious metals. We'll go over energy and agriculture as well, of course. If you've got any other questions, do keep them coming. Okay, so I'm just taking into a bird's eye view of the charts at the moment. We can have a look at what is going on currently. You can really see where uh, all the action is at the moment. So what we're going to be doing, I'm just going to move over. First of all, I want to take you to the US dollar index. So the US dollar index has had a very interesting move yesterday. We got a nice breakout. Uh, it came up to some key resistance levels actually yesterday. We had caught a really nice day trade on this. We had a really quick breakout out of the consolidation zone above 80.71. After we did that, though, we saw a complete reversal later on in the afternoon from via the ECB as well. We saw um, the US dollar index sell off quite strongly later in the afternoon and come all the way back and test the major level of support at 80.34, which you can see on the chart there. Now, we are seeing a little bit uh, of support at that level. We are seeing a bounce certainly off that level, which will put a little bit of pressure on the gold and silver market. Really, the uh, US dollar index is a fantastic market uh, for you to look at to gauge the non-farm payroll because, of course, it will affect the US dollar immensely. So if you see a breakout to the upside on the US dollar index, you can uh, often see the reverse for gold. So you'll see a sell-off on gold, a sell-off on silver. So if we do find the US dollar index gets supported at these key levels, and the figures come out stronger than expected today, I would expect another rally here on the US dollar index. We've got quite a strong upper trending channel at the moment. We're still above some key levels. So if we do get a rally on the US dollar index, we will see gold sell off. However, if we break support here on the USD and we come down and we break through the next key levels here, you can see on my chart, we're likely to then see a breakout to the upside for gold. So if US dollar index breaks support, certainly if it comes back down within this downward trending trend channel, which we were in for quite some time throughout most of 2014 up until the beginning of May, that will put uh, a bit of a fire under gold and we should see a breakout on gold. So we're definitely going to be watching out for that inverse correlation. So as we look on gold at the moment, right, what you want to note on gold currently, there is a consolidation zone. So you can see very clearly this is the consolidation that we've got on gold currently on the daily forming a little bit of an inverse hammer here. Um, let me just delete this. You can see some degree of a bit of a downward trend starting to form. Can you see that? Uh, so what I'd be looking at is either for a break of support on non-farm payroll. There may be an even earlier entry into this. It can be very quick with an instant execution trade. Uh, if we see that the US dollar index flies to the upside, the figures are good. This is going to put pressure on gold. We come down with support and we should see a nice sell short opportunity. Uh, on the flip side of that, if we do see that the uh, the US dollar index sells off and that you have weak figures and gold breaks out, we could we really just want to get a key break above the 1260 here. Okay, that's the key level we want to see for a breakout, and then we should get some a decent amount of volatility behind that. We've been consolidating all week, uh, just between support and resistance. So those are the three scenarios I see for gold at the moment. Um, which I see playing out. So that's what we're looking at on gold. If there are more questions on that, uh, feel free to just put that in the chat as well. 
Right, before we go back to Silver and I look at Platinum as well, I want to go over just some of the, the softs this week as well. We'll just take a look at uh, wheat. So the overall market in wheat has been fantastic. We just continue to uh, hold on to our sell short position here. We're just breaking low, lower lows, lower highs nearly every single day. We've had a fantastic trend on wheat since the beginning of May. We've just seen this. So you can see very clearly my MAs here as well, how well we're following this downward trend. And we're just we're just staying in this for uh, the time being until we come back down to the next key level of support below 591 at the moment. So we're just short at the moment. We've got a really nice uh, sell on that. Very similar situation to corn as well. Corn just continues to break down since we uh, we blew off, had a blow off top in uh, towards the beginning of May here. And we just continue to rotate lower, lower, low, lower highs. Very clear downward trend with below all the key moving averages. We've broken through another support actually just today. So we're looking again to just keep on, just hold on to our corn shorts at the moment in order to take advantage of a move lower here and uh, a break down to the next key support, which takes us down to about 430 here. So it's looking good for the sales on both corn and wheat and coffee at the moment as well. We're seeing a little bit of a consolidation here on coffee at the moment. On the daily, you can see another key support level to break where, again, coffee has had a pretty decent pullback over the month of May. Most commodities do sell off over May, as coined the term sell in May and go away. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of commodities are weak over the month of May. So we've seen that play out for coffee as well. And we're looking to see whether we're going to get a further break of support today to give us some additional sell short opportunities. OK, uh, so the US dollar index, yeah, we've covered that gold. So let's take a look. Actually, I'm going to take a look at platinum because I think platinum is one that you want to be keeping an eye on. So we had a fantastic short on platinum over the last week or so. But we've come down and we hit our major level of support, hit our key profit target, 1422, bounced to 1424. We're getting a really strong, solid move to the upside at the moment. Uh, you can see we're getting above some key moving averages. We've just come up to 1450. Nice psychological level of, uh, of resistance here as well for platinum. And we want to see if we're going to get a breakout on farm payroll and come back up to 2014 highs. Both platinum and palladium have been some of the best performing precious metals. Well, they have been the best performing precious metals in 2014 so far. And what I'd like to see is now a solid breakout higher and come back up to the 2014 highs here. If we can do that, that'll be great. We've also got a uh, just a bit of a reversal back here. You, you can just see on the chart as well. And just looking for a nice, there you go. Nice breakout higher, like so. So, uh, yeah, platinum is definitely one to keep an eye on, guys. Platinum and palladium, but I would favor platinum at the moment. It's, it's had more of a pullback, and it's, uh, it's, it's represents a better value trade right now. Copper, on the other hand, we've been short copper uh, since yesterday, actually. We're continuing to get a, a quite a large pullback on the copper market. We broke through this upward trending channel. We've broken through some key moving averages yesterday. We've just come down and hit our one-to-one -one profit target, actually. Uh, we're looking to see if we're going to hit our two to one now. So copper in the short term, we're looking, we've got some pressure here on copper and we're going to see whether it's going to follow through uh, with gold and silver joining on farm payroll. It's copper leading the way for a potential downward move for gold and silver over the NFP announcement. So we're definitely going to watch to see whether this correlation is going to follow through. But we've had a lovely sell short on copper this week as well. And uh, silver, we we'll just take a look at silver too. So silver, you've got a, a very clear level of resistance, as pointed out on the chart there. Again, a nice consolidation zone on silver. I want to see which way we're going to break out. Very clear downward trending channel on silver that it needs to break above in order to uh, to get some momentum to to the upside here. So uh, I would be careful about going long for the time being, unless we can break out of that downward trending channel. And we may well get some additional short opportunities if we can just take. The, uh, the legs of this short at 1863. If we can just take out support here for a sell short, we should see some good momentum uh, to the downside here for, for silver. So do keep an eye on that as well. Moving across to the energies where well, we had a really nice trade opportunity yesterday uh, on the natural gas storage inventories. And we're above, we've broken out of uh, a key resistance level here as well. You've got a nice it's a W shaped pattern here which we broke out of as well on natural gas market over this week. So here you go. W shaped pattern. And then you just very clearly broken out and come back to the next Fibonacci above. So we've just broken out of that V shaped reversal, come up and hit the next Fibonacci level profit target. Actually above all key moving averages at the moment. Uh, now yesterday, actually on the uh, natural gas inventories, we had a pullback, came back to support opportunity to get in that trade and a really nice rally as well. We've got a very strong, uh, trend at the moment on the tighter time frames for day trade. So that's been very good 
again for uh, a day trade on the natural gas storage inventories. As we go across to WTI and Brent, uh, we, we have been in a nice downward trend on WTI. We're continuing to get lower lows and lower highs here. We came down, hit a key MA yesterday, found some support there. Uh, I, I see it limited in terms of upside at the moment on the, both of the energies. You may get a breakout up towards this resistance channel, but then possibly a further sell-off. I'd be looking uh, for opportunities to actually sell into uh, the energies at the moment. They're starting to look weak as we go into uh, NFP. So we're looking for breaks towards resistance level and then opportunities to sell short. A uh, very similar situation on both Brent and WTI at the moment. You go out to the wider time frames. We're looking, uh, we've got fairly strong sell signals on those. So we'll be looking to see if we're going to get any reversals and move back down. Okay, so let me just take that back to the bird's eye view again. Uh, okay, so Morpheus. Um, more fix. Right, going to back to your question, where do we expect the highest volatility today on the markets? Right, the highest volatility on the, the uh, non-farm payroll will be gold, will be the US dollar index, and you should see decent volatility on oil as well. So you're, you're likely to see the highest volatility on those markets, certainly gold. You'll also see good volatility on silver, but the daily volatility on gold is much higher. If I had to pick, I'd be looking at gold, certainly the US dollar index, silver, and also the energies, so natural gas, Brent crude oil, WTI crude oil. Those are the key markets to look at. Fantastic. Right. Well, let's go over to have a look at the other key news announcements this week as we go into NFP and next week too, we'll see what other key news announcements that we've got. Okay, so today, of course, we have Friday 6th of June, 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We've got the U.S. non-farm payrolls. So non-farm payroll measures the change in the number of people employed during the previous month, excluding the farming industry. So job creation is, of course, the foremost indicator of consumer spending, accounts for the majority of economic activity. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the U.S. dollar, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. That will inversely affect gold and silver on that announcement, of course. Uh, Tuesday, the 10th of June next week, we've got Chinese CPI at 2.30 MPST, 9.35 uh, PM EST. The Consumer Price Index CPI measures the change in the price of goods and services from the perspective of the consumer. It's a key way to measure changes in purchasing trends and inflation. So China is, of course, a big buyer of the metals, gold, silver, copper, oil. A stronger than expected number should be taken as positive for the metals and energies and a lower than expected number is taken as negative. Then next Wednesday, the 11th of June, we've got the US crude oil inventory at 3.30 p.m. BST at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. That data reports the number of barrels of crude oil commercial firms have in their inventory. Commercial firms report those inventory levels to the Energy Information Administration on a weekly basis. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for crude oil and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. Then on Thursday, the 12th of June at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. retail sales. That data reports measures the change in the total value of sales at the retail level in the U.S. It's an important indicator of consumer spending. It is also considered as a pace indicator for the U.S. economy. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish or crude oil, and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. Thursday, the sorry, that should actually be relating to the U.S. dollar. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for the US dollar and vice versa. Thursday, the 12th of June, the US natural gas storage, that's at 3.30 p.m. BMT, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. So the Energy Information Administration, the EIA natural gas storage report, measures the change in the number of cubic feet of natural gas held in underground storage during the past week. So what we saw this week, we got an immediate sell-off. Um, it came down to key support and an opportunity to get in at a very good price. Uh, which gave us over a 100-point rally just yesterday in the afternoon. So uh, it's great. It's a great trade opportunity every week, natural gas, on those inventories. A higher-than-expected reading should be taken as bearish for natural gas prices, while a lower-than-expected reading should be taken as bullish. And then Friday, the 13th of June at 2.55 p.m. BSC, 9.55 Eastern Time, we have the U.S. Michigan Consumer Sentiment. That index rates the relative level of current and future economic conditions. So there are two versions of that data which are released two weeks apart. You've got the preliminary and the revised. So the pre preliminary data tends to have a greater impact and a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar while a lower than expected reading 
should be taken as bearish. Okay, I'm just going to flip back there so you can take a quickly jot those down if needed. Okay, so these are the key news announcements. Obviously, US non farm payroll today, Chinese CPI, US crude oil inventories, US retail sales, natural gas, US Michigan consumer sentiment. Okay, perfect. Right, and of course, if you'd like to uh, learn to trade commodities with the Gold and Silver Club, Courses are available at our international training centers and online. So you can find out more about that request information on the Golden Silver Club coaching programs and live trading room. Just go to uh, www.jointhegoldensilverclub.com or you can contact us at either our London, New York, Johannesburg, or Hong Kong or a Budapest office. OK, so numbers on the screen, depending on where in the world you are, um, we can uh, make that happen for you. So do get in touch and, of course, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. You receive free weekly report on the precious metals, on energies and agriculture, live market analysis and prices. So do take advantage of that as well. OK, fantastic. So we've got roughly about two hours till non-farm payroll, guys. So um, I wish you luck for today's trading and uh, we'll see you back here same time next week. So have a great weekend. and We'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.